G'day guys, Googs here. You're welcome to my drunk philosophy. Today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about politics. Not politics in the sense of left versus right or Labor versus Liberal or Republican versus Democrat, Tories versus Labor, whatever you wanna call it. I don't wanna talk about that today. I wanna to talk about what politics is, especially in a Western context. What is politics? It is directly oppositional power plays. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it. You've got two major parties in all cases, generally speaking. Obviously, in Europe, they've got major coalitions where a bigger party has to go and ask the other littler parties, uh, give them provisos and give them a little bit of a wedding cake or whatever it is, so that they'll come and join them. So they've got the numbers to, come to govern the country. But for places like Australia, New Zealand, America and the United Kingdom, it's two parties. And they're oppositional. Okay, it is a complete oppositional ideal, which means that it's power. Okay, one seeks to win over the general populace to beat the other that's already incumbent in government. Politics is power. Okay, the game of politics is played to dominate or to win. It's like a, if you like, it's a bit of an intellectual war where we, the people, are being warred upon by the Liberal Party, Liberal Nat Coalition, and the Labour Party. That's essentially what's going on here. And they want us, they want to win our hearts and minds through propaganda or promises of usually little consequence because they don't generally come through with them to get us to vote for one side or the other, okay? That's the whole point of politics. That's why we've got an incumbent party and an opposition party, okay? Now, the original concept of, of uh, democratic politics was that you get these two groups, they debate issues, they then come up with strategies that could uh, further the nation or benefit uh, the most people they could possibly benefit. That was the initial intention and perhaps have other parties too, so that it's not all, you know, one-way traffic, you know, as far as the two big parties go. That isn't what's happened. <laughs> um, so we are literally stuck between two warring political factions trying to uh, win over the public to become in power or to have power to, to lead the nation. We also have politics, though, at the social level. You and me, we've all seen it, I would imagine. Maybe you've been a part of it, where you're a part of a social group somewhere, new people come in, or maybe some older people that have been there for a while that have decided that they should be the ones in charge of the hierarchy because they've got the better ideas of how to run the show. And so they'll go behind people's backs and basically do the same sort of thing, make promises to the people of the group, and they'll, they'll try to make allies with this person and that person over there and essentially try to usurp the position of whoever's in charge of the hierarchy already. That's personal politics, right? This happens all the time. Politics is all about power. Who has the power? That's politics. So when we see a society that, especially in America, where it's so political, the people have become politicized to the point of ridiculous levels. I mean, insane levels. Where they're willing to fight each other in the streets because I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican. This is where democracy starts dying, okay? Because now you have one side says this, one side says that. And the people who can be propagandized or the people who can be promised to, now there's less and less and less and less of them. Why? Because more and more people are either saying, well, I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. This is when you start losing democracy. When you've got a polity that is 48% on one side and uh, let's say 49% on the other side, so basically they're 50-50, but you've only got 3% that'll make the difference, then you're in trouble. You are in major trouble because that 3% probably still won't make a damn. So now you're actually looking at politicised armies. Because if you say, well, I'm Labour for life or I'm Lib Nats for life, you're actually not being... Democratic. If you're saying, I'm a Republican for life, or I'm a Democrat for life, once again, that isn't the point of democracy. The point of democracy is you do not trust 
your politicians. Because if you trust them, you don't hold them to account. You don't put their feet to the fire. They're no longer fit for purpose. They can do whatever they like. But this is what we're seeing, is that people are becoming more and more stultified, one side or the other. My thoughts on this matter, and as far as what we need to do, is we need to stop trusting our politicians. Now, you could be a lefty and not vote Democrat or not vote Labor. You can vote Greens or one of the other parties, the smaller parties that have your persuasion. That's fine. And if you're a Lib Nat or a Republican, there are other smaller parties that you can vote for other than the big two, right? Because you, you don't have to just vote for one party or another. We're not talking... Uh, politics is not a game of NFL or baseball or basketball or Aussie rules football or NRL, okay? It's not that. It's not, I'm a Eagle, like myself, I'm a West Coast Eagles fan, I will be for life. Yeah, but there's a bit of a difference between a sporting competition and a political competition. Open your mind a little bit to the potentials of the policies of both sides before you th actually vote. Just go, well, I'm, I'm, I'm on the left, so I have to vote for Democrats. Well, no, you don't. What if the Republicans actually have some decent ideas? Maybe you should, cons I'm not saying you shouldn't vote for them, but maybe you should consider voting for them and vice versa. Vice versa. This whole idea that you have to vote for one side or another is one of the biggest issues in our society today. You don't. You're... It, in a democratic society, it's your vote. It's you. As an individual, you get to decide. And if you decide not to vote, that's fine too. Okay? But just do a little bit of research before the elections. Find out what each party stands for and where you stand on them. If you can see that you're a Labour supporter and you can see that the Liberals have got some great ideas, why not? It's not going to hurt you. Just give it a try. It's just a tick. If you don't like either side and you want to vote for third party, do it. But you ne if you're going to hold these people, these leaders, these elected people to their standards, then you can't trust them. You can't trust them to do what's right. And the other thing you can't do is become apathetic. Okay, because once again, you're not going to put their feet to the fire. You can't trust these people. They're humans. They will make mistakes. They will err. They will come up with false promises. They will lie to you openly. This is, this is something that everybody knew up until apparently yesterday. Okay? So next time you have to vote, or maybe even next time you've got, uh, you want to argue with somebody on the internet, think about that. Think about that. Think, am I becoming zealous over my political affiliations? And especially if you're an atheist or a new atheist, are you becoming religious about this? Are you becoming zealous about your politics to the point where you're basically swearing allegiance to your political party? As if they were some kind of new order religion. We need to remember we're dealing with people in charge. And these people must have their feet held to the fire Politics is about who holds the power. That's the end game of politics. Okay? I'm Nathan Googs Fletcher. Be good. Don't be evil. I'll see you on the next one. Uru!